humanities welcome back to class okay today is kind of a class discussion day uh as i've mentioned before like the number one thing that i have missed this year in class is doing just like interactive class discussions i love that and humanities class was really designed to be a very much a class, you know, in-person face-to-face discussion class where we hit a lot of like important topics that would affect your life living in the modern world and getting into like controversial topics and, and just things that you should kind of know as you uh, head out and, and take on the adventure of life. <clears throat> I found that challenging to incorporate class discussions in a time where where most of you are doing remote learning. Um, but I'm trying to do the best I can. And one of my ideas was, and I maybe should have implemented this a little earlier in the year, uh, but a few weeks back, I did a post that was called, titled, Ask Me Anything. Uh, and really my scope of what humanities is, which a, a traditional humanities class usually focuses on art history, which we haven't covered any art history in this class, uh, but I like that title because it, it, like I said, it's a class that's designed to be all about just like being a human in the modern world uh, and life advice and, and, you know, issues that are facing society and cultural issues. Um, so on that Ask Me Anything post, you really could ask me basically anything. Uh, quite a few of you participated in it. Uh, I had also offered this out to my U.S. history class. I didn't get as much, uh, you know, uh, interaction or as many good questions from the freshmen. Uh, so maybe, you know, that's a compliment to you guys that most of you are, are upperclassmen, sophomores to, to seniors. And uh, I got some really, really good questions uh, on that post. So uh, I'm going to try to get to everybody's question. Uh, but I, I had so many for this hour that if I went through and answered every single question on one video, the way I babble, and I'm, you know I'm kind of long-winded, it would have probably been an hour and a half or two hour long video or something, and I figured hardly anybody's going to watch that. Uh, also, like I wanted to you know, kind of highlight some of the good questions that were asked. So when I do these videos, I'm, you can expect me to hit about three to five responses per video uh, to keep it kind of manageable in time. And on the next post where I plan to, maybe tomorrow or uh, at some point in the near future, I'll do another video just like this where I get to more students' questions. Uh, I will give everybody who, whose question is getting answered, uh, and I'll try to get to all of you. I'll do a best effort there. Uh, I'll give you a shout out on the video. I'll announce who asked the question, then I'll give my response to it. Uh, also, as I said on that original post, if I use your question, which I'll try to hit all of you, I will give extra credit. Now, if it's a very, it was a basic superficial question that takes me about 20 or 30 seconds to answer, you'll get something. I'll give you some extra credit points right at the end of the quarter when I'm finalizing grades, uh, but it'll be you know a little bit, maybe a couple percent bump. Uh, for those people that ask a real in depth question on, you know, some maybe controversial topic or something that I find very intriguing, uh, those people I'll probably give a bigger bump to. So based on, you know, the, the kind of question you asked and what kind of response it, and discussion it leads to, uh, that'll kind of determine how much extra credit you get. Now, uh, a lot of you are in a position where you could definitely benefit from some extra credit. So if you're watching this video and you're like, man, I should have done that. I should have got some easy extra credit points. Well, I'm a pretty generous guy. It's not too late. Uh, I'm definitely going to hit the people that made the deadline their first priority. I will get to all of them first. But if you want to try to get some extra credit points too uh, and get my take on on some topic, some question that uh, you know you're kind of interested on in what Taluki's perspective is, uh, you can still send it to me. I'll continually check that Ask Me Anything post that was up maybe about two weeks ago. Um, so you can go add it there or you can just email it directly to me and I'll make a best effort to get to your questions too. And if I do, uh, you would get some extra credit as well. Uh, for this first video today, I'm going to hit five questions and it's in no real particular order or anything. Uh, I really did just kind of pull it up in the first couple that I had looked at. Uh, yeah, that, that was, was who I, I got to. So if you're uh, if you don't get a shout on a, on this video uh, and I don't hit your question, be patient. Hang in there. Uh, I like I said, I plan to uh, break this up, and I'll probably have three or four of these videos coming out. 
also another logical question that you might be wondering, how does this affect my grade? Do I have to watch this video? Is it going to tie into an assignment? Um, that's kind of to be determined at this point. I do plan to take, I, I do want everybody to view these, uh, and I, I won't have a lengthy intro on the next one. I'm kind of explaining it all there on the first one. Everybody should watch them. And I do plan in some way, shape, or form uh, to tie some of these questions into some of our final assignments. Uh, basically, what you could expect, probably on our last journal entry or two, or uh, some of our last Q&A assignments, and maybe even something else. I might do some other minor uh, assignment of some sort. Uh, we'll probably tie into some of these Ask Me Anything responses, okay? Uh, so everybody watch them. Be ready to go. Uh, and I hope you get something from it. I, I found uh, a lot of these questions to be pretty darn interesting. Also, one final disclaimer. <clears throat> Some of these are very controversial, kind of touchy uh, uh, questions, which I love uh, because I, you know, some teachers want to play it safe and they don't want to ever hit any controversial topic because they're worried that they might get in trouble or get pushed back. Uh, uh, they just want to stick right to the state curriculum and man, just keep it that way because that's like playing it safe. Well, I didn't get into education to, to just like play it safe necessarily. Uh, I love the discussion part of, of being a teacher. Uh, and I love to actually like try to inspire critical thinking and challenge viewpoints. And I want to get you, my ultimate goal as a teacher is to build relationships with you, to try to get you uh, off to a good start in life. And then also to, to inspire like some critical thinking in you. Uh, so please remember on these, I am not like, I, I'm not Jesus or Muhammad. I, I don't, Ever pretend to say that I have all the answers or that you need to think like me. All of my responses to this style of assignment, these ask me anything, uh, it's just my two cents. It's my subjective opinion. Uh, and I'm wrong on a lot of things in life. So don't be offended by any of my responses. If you disagree with me, that's 100% fine. I've never marked anyone down in class for disagreeing with me. In fact, I actually like it. Uh, I really enjoy having you know differences of opinion and having a good, respectful, like rational discussion about it uh, where we are still friends afterwards words and nobody's walking away offended. So uh, yeah, don't don't be offended by any of my responses. Uh, hopefully you, you wouldn't be offended by them anyway. Remember, it's just my two cents and, and my take on it. And I'll also say, uh, and this is something I would encourage in all of you to, I try to be very open-minded and I don't have set really opinions on a whole lot of things in my life. A lot of it, I still feel like, eh, like for example, on the religion topic that I talked about, I'm an agnostic. Uh, you know, I don't really, at this point in my life, believe that the existence of God can be proven or disproven. But if I see some really strong evidence one way or the other, I'm willing to change my stance on that and become a believer or become an atheist if, I, if something uh, new went into the equation. And I think you guys, in general in life, that's a good way to go through, uh, especially when you're younger. Be open-minded, be open to ideas, challenge your own ideas, uh, and hopefully we'll do a little bit of that in this video. So without any further delay, let's get into the, some of the questions that were asked today. Uh, the very first one I pulled, and boy, this one is a controversial uh, topic that has been blowing up a lot over the last year. Uh, I see articles all the time on it. Uh, and a lot of news stories, and it's just been a pretty inflammatory uh, topic of discussion out there uh, in our culture. And this question comes from Jordan Birch. Uh, he said, basically, he asked uh, to sum it up, <clears throat> Taluki, what's your perspective on the whole gender pronouns issue? Okay, like LGBTQ and then the whole the trans uh uh, issue that's playing out in the country right now, like culturally, uh, you know, people, if you identify, if you were biologically born one gender, but then you identify as a different gender, or if you fall into a category of being like non-binary where you don't I, I identify as either gender, uh, essentially that that's what I think he's getting at there. And then I, uh, the whole pronouns issue is like if you were biologically born a guy, but you identify as a girl, uh, should you be referred to as he, him, or should you kind of respect their wishes and refer to them as, you know, her or she? OK, uh, so my take on that is, is I think kind of maybe a little bit complicated and nuanced. I don't necessarily fall into the conservative camp or liberal camp or like Republican or Democrat camp, I think totally either way. Uh, first of all, I'll say this. 
I can't, I don't really identify as a Republican or a Democrat. I find a lot of flaws in both parties. If anything, the, the political party out there that I would probably most be in alignment with is the Libertarian Party, uh, which if you don't know anything about them, Libertarians are all about like personal freedom and individual liberty. And they typically want less government regulation, less government interference in your life. So first of all, I would say, because that's kind of how I'm wired in my perspective, I don't think that there should be a ton of like legislation, especially like legislation legislation from the federal government mandating anything. Uh, for example, in Canada, and I'm, I'm not sure if this law ever got passed through or what actually came of it, but it was really controversial a couple years ago. Uh, the, the Canadian government was going to mandate that you had to uh, basically use whatever gender pronouns that the person, you know, said that they preferred you use. And, and it was kind of like under a, a stiff penalty, like you would have legal consequences if you, you used incorrect gender pronouns for somebody and offended them. I don't think that's a good idea. I, 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 I don't really want the government like it, that involved in our life and specifically in the category of language. Um, there are some cases where maybe the government does inter need to intervene on, on certain language issues or as it pertains to like federal jobs or things like that. Uh, but in general, I view this as way more of a cultural issue uh, that should be hashed out. And hopefully there's more open and honest discussions about it uh, in the public square rather than like a legislative issue that I want hashed out in Congress. So hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. Now, on a personal level, uh, libertarians also are all about individual freedom. And basically, like you do whatever you want is kind of a libertarian philosophy as long as, and I don't really care what you do with your life and your freedom, as long as it doesn't infringe upon my life and my freedoms. All right. So that's a concept that, you know, I, I pretty strongly believe in. You do you. You do what you want to do. If you identify as a different gender or you want to be non-binary, I don't care. It doesn't affect me or my life at all. Uh, so I kind of respect your wishes on that. And I'm totally fine with it. Uh, I don't want to ever push my morals or anything on anybody else. Uh, you know, and, and a lot of people might disagree with me on that, but that's kind of how I feel. So on a personal level, uh, and I have had actually over the years, probably uh, getting up there quite a few different uh, I, students that would identify as transgender. Uh, I don't think I, to my knowledge, I've never had a, like a non-binary student uh, that would identify as neither gender. Uh, but in the case of like transgender students, I've always tried to respect their wishes. Uh, to my knowledge, I can't remember ever slipping up and using an improper pronoun for them. And I just view that as a respect type thing. I think everybody should be welcome in, into public schools. Uh, and, and you should treat people, you know, I kind of, even though I'm not a religious person, I very much believe in the golden rule, it's called, which you can find this in a lot of different religions. Uh, Jesus actually spoke about it in the Bible, where it's like, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Uh, basically, you know, it, it kind of ties into karma, too. You know, you reap what you sow. If you treat other people nice and respectfully, hopefully they'll treat you nice. And, and even if they don't treat you nice back, it's still the right thing to do, to be a kind person and to be respectful of others. Uh, so me on a personal level, if you identify as a different gender, I'm happy to use whatever pronouns you want and uh, try to respect your wishes. Uh, if, if I ever slip up on it, it's unintentional. I'm not doing it to personally offend. Uh, now, I could see out there other situations where a teacher just refuses to do it and they just, they purposely, they 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 use the, other, the, the gender that you biologically were rather than the one you prefer and they might do it in a grading way or uh, something like that. Um, well, I, I wouldn't have a whole lot of respect for teachers that do that. I think you're just kind of needlessly like uh, provoking and uh, kind of maybe being a jerk and kind of mean and pushing your views on somebody else. Um, but at the same time, I would say I don't think it should be like a law that you have to do that and you'd have some penalty or lose your job if, if you slipped up or or even intentionally kind of uh, use the other pronouns. Uh, so I, I view it more as a cultural thing, a respect thing. And I try to abide by and call students whatever they want to be called uh, within reason, even with students that have like a nickname uh, or something. Like I remember I had a dude that was on the wrestling team and he was in class years ago and his name was Chester, but he went by Cheeto, which kind of an unconventional nickname. A lot of the other teachers in school would not call him Cheeto. I didn't care. I was like, hey, what's up, Cheeto? He, he, he was a good dude. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, that's kind of my take on that. I try to call people what they want to be called. Now, 
next issue here that kind of piggybacks on that. The non-binary issue is a little bit more hazy in my mind, uh, and it's harder for me to wrap my head around because you know, a, a lot of things in language you do refer at, or, or you, as you're speaking, you will use, uh, I'm referring to him, his grade, or uh, how she did in a sport or things like that. And he, him, uh, and then she and her are singular. You know, when you're using those terms, you're referring to one person. Okay. Well, in the case of somebody that identifies as non-binary, and I'll be honest, I don't have a whole lot of experience in this because Personally, in my life, I don't know anybody that I'm aware of that ident identifies as non-binary. And to my knowledge, I, no student has ever come forward to me and, and said that they are non-binary. Uh, so it's not something I have a whole lot of experience with. But in the case, from my understanding of it, uh, for people that identify as non-binary, they want to be referred to as they and them rather than a he or a she. That boggles my mind because, and here's the reason, it's more of a grammatical thing. Uh, if you refer to somebody as they or them, that is plural. It makes you think you're referring to multiple people uh, where he and she are singular. And I've read articles uh, where it was like somebody from Hollywood. Uh, and then I looked at a Wikipedia bio the other day, and it was somebody that was identified as non-binary. And throughout the whole article where they're talking about this one singular person, they keep referring to him as they or them. And man, it was confusing to me because I kept thinking, well, who is this group of people? Who are these other people? And then I had to check myself and be like, oh, wait, it's a non-binary person, so it should be singular. Anyway, I find that very confusing. Um, and that's just a personal thing. And maybe that's because I'm 40 years old and like this is kind of a new thing coming into the public square. You guys might be able to adapt to it a lot easier being younger. Uh, but man, I find that kind of confusing. And uh, I don't know. I feel like there's got to be a better way of like being respectful to non-binary people, uh, but also trying to use like proper grammar uh, that, that isn't so confusing. So that's my two cents on it. Uh, hopefully that doesn't offend anybody, but that's just kind of my thoughts and my take on that whole issue. Uh, but at the end of the day, I do think it's a cultural issue and I think we should have more open, honest, and respectful discussions on it. Uh, one thing I've seen uh, with this issue particularly, man, it's a wedge issue that kind of divides people and people want to jump on one camp or the other. And uh, you see a lot of venom and hate going both ways. Uh, I don't think that's good for anybody on any side. Uh, and as always, I kind of feel like if it doesn't affect my life personally uh, and there's no like legal consequences and it's not, yeah, infringing on my rights, I, I don't care about it a whole lot. I, I feel like, you know, like everybody should just kind of do themselves and, and uh, yeah, have that freedom to express themselves how they want. So there's my two cents there. Next one. Now, this question comes from Gavin Farrell, one of my all time favorite students. And I hope he sees this video because he was a graduating senior. Uh, but I will try to contact him, all those seniors, and send this out just in case they're interested in hearing their shout out. Gavin, I love this one because, uh, he and I had always headed off. We were good friends uh, in U.S. history, or maybe I shouldn't say friends, but a good teacher-student relationship where we talked and discussed quite a bit. Um, and I've always liked him and had a lot of respect for him here. Uh, and and here's why. He, uh, he kind of asked me a question and rolls it into a compliment all in one, which, huh, what, what a way to get onto my uh, good, si good side. Now, his grades are already finalized, so I can't even give him extra credit at this point. But uh, Buddy, I wish I could. <laughs> anyway, here's his question. He said, essentially, uh, Taluki, you seem like you have your act together and, and like ducks in a row. Uh, could you talk a little bit and give some tips on how you set routines for doing workouts, eating healthy, and keeping an open mind? Uh, and then kind of paid me a compliment, and I don't have the exact quote there, but uh, basically said, you know, I, I kind of admire you. you. It looks like you uh, have a pretty good life. And I uh, what are some tips for, you know, kind of becoming a Taluki? What would Taluki recommend? Uh, so good question. Thanks, Gavin, for the compliment. And uh, I'd say this. 
I didn't always have those routines at all. Uh, if you go back to like when I was your age in high school, man, I was not getting up early and working out. I was eating like crap. Uh, and I would say back at that time in life, I probably didn't have a very open mindset. Uh, so it's something that I have worked on throughout my whole life. Uh, you know, back in high school, I was able to stay more fit and everything because I did sports and was staying active that way. Once I went to college, man, I got super fat. I, I I put on more than the freshman 15. Uh, I gained a lot of weight in college because I wasn't doing sports and, and physical activity had fallen off and I wasn't exercising regularly. I uh, fast forward on into my 30s. I'm not a person that really struggles with anxiety or depression or hadn't throughout most of my life, but it hit me like a wave when I was about 34, 35 years old, where I got really depressed for no apparent reason. Uh, I tried doing some different, and this might be getting a little too personal, uh, but I think it's an important thing to kind of talk about and share too, and, and I try to be open about this. Um, I talked to my doctor, had gone and talked to some therapists. I got on uh, several different, I tried different uh, like antidepressant medicines. None of them really helped me a whole lot. And that doesn't mean that I'm saying nobody should use them or they can't work for anybody, but they didn't work that good for me. Uh, and then I finally, and it was honestly kind of through podcasts, uh, where I started listening to different conversations online and hearing other people talk about issues like that too and, and solutions for it, uh, that I finally kind of woke up and realized, you know what, I'm not going to find solutions to my problems in a p pill bottle. You know what I mean? I have to actually change things in my life. Uh, and at that point, I was super busy. I was kind of a, a new dad. Uh, I was stressed out. I was doing lots of drivers at hours. I was a new head coach in wrestling, which the head coaching position is a lot of stress. Uh, I was our union president. I was teaching uh, and, you know, had two young kids. It was too much on my plate and I wasn't making time for me. Uh, so honestly, I, I scaled back some of those things. I stopped doing uh, a lot of those jobs or I reduced my role in them. Um, I made myself start working out. And, and this was hard for me to do because I always had liked sleeping in. But now I religiously, between 4 a.m. to 5 a.m., at some point I, I set my uh, clock and I get up and do a morning workout. I just made myself do it. There is strong evidence that if you have, you don't have to do it necessarily in the morning, but physical activity, uh, there is a direct line to that reducing anxiety and depression levels. And I found in my life, getting physical activity in every day, like religiously, uh, that made a huge impact on me. It helped me lose some weight uh, and it helped me with like those stress levels. Uh, as far as eating healthy, well, I already said in my the seven deadly sins lesson, man, I struggle with gluttony. So I eat healthy food every day, but unfortunately, I also eat a lot of junk. That's an area I still need to improve on there, Gavin. Uh, anyway, just cut the sugars and the crap out as best you can, but that's something that I, I need to work on more in the, in the future. Um, and then as far as an open mindset, I wasn't always necessarily open-minded. I think I was pretty rigid in my uh, ideals and stuff back when I was in high school and college, and I kind of swung from one extreme to the other. I grew up very religious. I was more conservative. When I went to college, I kind of I became an atheist, uh, and I was way more of a liberal mindset. Uh, and then I'd like to think uh, in my own mind that as I got a little bit older and wiser, and especially over the last maybe five to 10 years, I've kind of mellowed and come to the center. And I've realized, man, I don't have all the answers. I, I'm just one curious dude that's a history teacher that's trying to figure out the world. Uh, and I don't have all the answers to everything. And that's okay. Uh, and I just try to go through life with that mindset that I expose myself to different ideas. I listen to like, I, I'm a big podcast guy, obviously. I, I tied that into a lot of lessons, but uh, I listen to people that are conservatives, that are liberals. I listen to atheists and religious people, uh, and I try to hear different opposing viewpoints and then just make sense of it my best. And there's really hardly any ideas in my life that I'm like just totally committed to at this point. Most things I'm kind of open to discussion on. Uh, and I think that's a good way to go through life, to be open-minded uh, and not real rigid in your mindset. And I also think that's something that takes a little bit of work. And as your brains are still developing, uh, mindfully try to work on keeping an open mind and exposing yourself to other ideas, challenging your own ideas. That doesn't mean getting rid of them, uh, but like confront them and look at other arguments against them. Uh, and if your ideas are right, 
Well, when you question them, they should hold up to that. And then you have more reason for believing them. If they don't hold up to the questioning, well, then maybe you need to reevaluate and change those ideas. So thanks for the compliment, Gavin. That was a pretty good question. Hopefully uh, some of you take something away from that and, and maybe can do something with it. Uh, next couple. These ones will be... Uh, a little bit shorter and briefer to answer. Uh, so Riley Garrison, he asked me, what was my least favorite subject to cover? Uh, honestly, for a humanities class, remember this class uh, is an elective that I created and I, my kind of my bar for anything I cover is I want to cover things that are interesting to me and kind of relevant to the world today. Uh, I don't know that I have a subject that is my least interesting or like least favorite subject for humanities class because pretty much anything I picked in this class, I picked it because it interested me. Uh, now, if you were to talk about my U.S. history class that most of you have had, that one, I have a more set state curriculum, a time period that I have to cover. And I would say probably where I'm at in the beginning of the year, uh, for any of you that had my class, I fast forward through the late 1800s, post-Civil War, on up into kind of Industrial Revolution, Teddy Roosevelt era in the early 1900s. I skip through that pretty quick. I find the late 1800s just kind of a drier time in U.S. history. Uh, but then I feel like once you get into the 1900s, Teddy Roosevelt is an interesting character. The World Wars are awesome. The Civil Rights Movement. I love all that stuff. Uh, for humanities class, it was kind of raw this year. I don't think I... Uh, man, you know, I, I don't think I did everything perfect. I'm definitely going to revise the class and improve it. So thanks for being my guinea pigs this year. Uh, and my apologies for stuff that maybe went off the rails and, and didn't go perfectly. I uh, just know I, I'm still refining the class, but I think pretty much all of the subjects that I covered in humanities uh, really kind of interest me. So I don't know that I, I have a good answer for, for humanities class on least favorite subject. Uh, Ariana said, uh, uh, what's your favorite thing to teach? So kind of the inverted question there. I thought it made sense to throw that in. You know what? I I really like in U.S. history. I love covering World War I. Uh, I also very much like the Vietnam War and the Civil Rights Movement. Those are some of my absolute favorites. For humanities class, uh, I really... I like anything that's a controversial, like political issue. Uh, if you can't tell by that, I love talking about things like debate type things. Um, I also, I really like the religion stuff. Uh, I was interested in that. I know I, I definitely have to refine that unit and make it a lot better. Uh, I, I already have made a lot of notes on how to improve it, but, but that would be up there on my list too. So, uh, but to kind of, without getting too specific on it, I think, uh, probably my all around favorite thing to do is talk about controversial and intriguing political and cultural issues that apply today. I love that stuff. And I really love uh, this year. We didn't do it because we weren't all in class, but in humanities, normally I would do a debate unit. Uh, and, and I always had a lot of fun with that. And usually I would have you sign up for topics that you're passionate about. And then you might be passionate on uh, some issue, uh, like we had mentioned earlier, gender pronouns, say, or like uh, maybe a Trump versus Biden, some political issue or, or something like that. I, I would find something that you're highly interested in, and then I would make you argue and debate from the opposite side. So you'd have to argue on behalf of a, a viewpoint that you don't agree with. Uh, that's I, I like doing it that way because I think in order to be a really good debater and arguer, it's so important that you understand what the other side is thinking. You have to put yourself in their shoes, figure out what are they saying, know their arguments. Uh, for one, that's the best way to, to win people over. If you can find some common ground and understand their mind, uh, I think that's about the only way to. Hurling insults at them and just yelling and spouting off facts really doesn't ever change anybody's mind. Uh, but you got to kind of put yourself in somebody else's shoes. So I, I like any lessons that would tie into that. Last question for today. Uh, another graduating senior. I'll try to get him this video too so he can hear his shout out. But uh, Jacob Crutch, uh, he asked, I love this question. Uh, and he's the only person from any of my classes that really asked me this. This is a perfect question for this style of assignment. He essentially asked me, what would be the one question I would ask if I could get the absolute truth to it? So like if there was some crystal ball, you know, this metaphorical or like kind of hypothetical scenario, what would be the one question I would ask that I could 100% get the verifiable, perfect truth answer to uh, if there was just one question I could ask it? 
man, I had to think about that one for a few minutes because I have a lot of things that, you know, I, I would like to kind of get to the bottom of uh, maybe UFOs, stuff like that. Uh, that would be really curious. Are aliens coming in? Is there Are there subterranean lizard people? That one crossed my mind. When is the world going to end? Uh, but you know what one I think I would go with? Here, here it is. I would say, is there really a God or a higher power or not? Or even like, you know, was Jesus or was Muhammad like, the ab absolute I see that one I actually I probably I take that back a little bit because I want to know is there a higher power is there actually a god or gods uh or is it more the atheist perspective and is that all just kind of made up and figments of our imagination uh I guess I wouldn't do the specific Jesus one because you know maybe that one is no it's not but then that doesn't really answer me what other religion is right I would want to kind of know do any of the religions have it right? Is there a higher power? And, and if there is, which religion is closest to having it correct? Uh, boy, that would be an interesting one to me. And as I said, I'm an agnostic. I'm pretty open-minded on that. I still want to learn about religion, but uh, I still kind of feel like that that's something that we'll never be able to like scientifically prove. It's a matter of faith and you can't absolutely prove the existence of God or disprove it. You can look at evidence, but uh, that would be one. Man, that would be my number one question. So, one uh, all right, that's all I got for you for this one. Might tie it into a journal or some uh, Q and A responses. I hope you liked it, found it a little bit interesting. If you have any combat comments or feedback or want clarification from me, or if you want to challenge any of my viewpoints, I love it when people do that. Uh, shoot me an email. Give me some feedback. Do it in a respectful way. But I love talking about that stuff, especially if people like disagree with me and uh, want to challenge any of my views. I, I encourage that and welcome it. Uh, or better yet, come on in and see me. We got two weeks left. Uh, a lot of you I haven't seen it all this year. Hey, if you got the opportunity and you feel safe enough to do it, come on in. Have a chit chat with me in class. I'd love to sit down and chat with each and every one of you. Okay, have a good afternoon. I'll be coming back with another one of these videos and I'll try to babble a little bit less uh, in the very near future. Have a great day.